in, in certain, on certain small islands where there have never been any killers, no predators, there you'll find the animals are remarkably friendly and tame. And I think that over a period of time it would be possible to develop that sort of relationship with other species of animals. But unfortunately there's always someone with a gun, there's always someone who prefers to maim or kill an animal rather than to watch it or enjoy its company, which is what I prefer to do. I think every time when a gorilla has met human beings who have not been out to kill or hurt or hunt it, uh, the, the connection has always been friendly. It could have been a tragedy recorded moment by moment on a home movie camera, but instead the boy was unharmed by Yambo. And this giant of the Channel Island Zoo became the biggest animal hero since Lassie. The child was lying still and, and it, was, it had fallen. And it is entirely possible that the gorilla saw this child and, and reacted to it as if it were an injured ape. Desmond Morris, author of The Naked Ape and The Human Zoo, knows as much about animals as any man. A lot of people would obviously like to think that Jambo was being kind and gentle. Oh, it certainly was behaving kindly and gently. And whether the motives were to protect the child from the young gorillas or the young gorillas from the child, or whether it was just concerned, he gave it the most gentle of touches. And it's uh, probably in that single act has done more good for the image of the gorilla than all the wildlife films that have ever been made. <laughs> hang around wild animals, the more you realise that human behaviour is far more bizarre. So some of us try to talk to the animals, and when you live in a concrete jungle, it's fascinating to get this close. You've got another one over there. <laughs> Clever the way she spots these things, isn't she? I haven't even seen that there. Man meets beast, in this case a mere slip of a girl gorilla. But at 200 pounds, Bamenda has the strength of 10 men. And to talk to this animal, as we'll find out, it can get quite hairy. <laughs> when you think of the power of that animal, I mean, even a chimpanzee is four times as strong as a man. I, I shudder to think how much stronger a gorilla is. <laughs> There's very little reason for gorillas to like us, according to Desmond Morris. For hundreds of years, well, at least for a hundred years now, every time a gorilla in the wild has met people, uh, it's been down the barrel of a gun. It's, uh, it's not an animal that goes out of its way to attack. It doesn't go on the warpath. Uh, if gorillas do attack people, it usually has very good reason for doing so, and it's usually been triggered into it. <laughs> I'll never be sure what triggered the mender. She's one of Yambo's 15 kids now living at John Aspinall Zoo in England. Aspinall believes in close physical contact now with his turn. wild animals. Oops. He Not says if we can out. just get over our fear of the gorillas, we can be friends. Whereas with wild animals who have had all the process of selection, the pressure of selection, natural selection, imposed on them by circumstances for 10 million years, they can't afford to have um, delinquent um, offspring. They're very, very few. So I would say that um, it's very rare in an animal to get a, a bad, a bad one. <laughs> but round about now, I felt the game was more like guerrilla warfare. And it was John Aspinall who said, let's get out of here. That looked like a lot of fun, didn't it? And it was until the last couple of minutes when Bemenda suddenly showed that she wasn't quite as gentle as her daddy Yambo. We were trying to get out of the cage when Peter the keeper found that the lock wouldn't open. And all of a sudden, from about 20 feet up, Bemenda dropped through the air and knocked me off my feet with a killer Kowalski forearm jolt. This is not the king hit, but it'll give you an idea of what happens when a gorilla gets excited. <laughs> we had to get out of the cage by using a hose to keep the mender back and then cutting the lock with bolt cutters. John, mm -hmm. what did happen then? 
um, she got a bit unpleasant. You know, she was definitely getting a bit narky at the end, wasn't she? You know, she was aggressive. Um, I think it was a question of probably um, hierarchy. I mean, I think she wanted to make sure that she could establish a hierarchy over you, dominance over you, which females will try and do with any, in, in, you know, a newcomer, whether um, male or female. If I had resisted more instead of rolling around and laughing with her, would it have made yeah, any probably difference? probably would have been better, in fact. But with us, it's, you know, if you just get the head in the wrong position and, and you get a 150-pound or 200-pound animal jumping on you from a height, it's, it's risky. It's the toughest little cuddle I've ever had. But going in with, um, with um, wild animals is risky. Just how risky it was, I found out later when Aspinall talked with the keeper. God, that was bad luck, wasn't it, with them? Go on, blood. We were lucky in a way that she didn't land a few, you know. Well, she didn't break his neck, actually, when she jumped, you know. So animal love can be risky business. But as Aspinall says, it is exciting. Oh, yes, because if you play with tigers or elephants, bull elephants particularly, and gorillas, male gorillas in particular, of course there's an element of risk, but then, I mean, that, I suppose, is the spice that makes so many things in life worthwhile. I mean, you Australians are, have still got more spirit for that sort of thing than the English. The English are, you know, degenerate people now. And any, any sort of risk, you know, there are all sorts of government departments which try and prevent one taking any risk. You wouldn't get the BBC walking into the cage like we did? We did actually have a BBC... Uh, a BBC journalist who insisted on coming into the cage with another female. We told him that he might get quite badly roughed up and even bitten, but he didn't seem to mind. But when it happened, he did get a bite and he sued us and we had to pay him £860. <laughs> he was a wimp. It seems that you seek out this close contact with the animals. In the case of your Siberian tigers, you certainly did. Oh, yes. I mean, I do with all the animals here. The keepers are encouraged to build um, bonds with the animals whether they're large and dangerous or whether they're small. I encourage it, and the, 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 there are a few um, disadvantages. One is that a keeper could come to injury, as it has happened here. John Aspinall had a tiger that killed the head keeper, but the keeper and Aspinall had had a pack that, if anything like that happened, they'd let the animal live, so they did. But a month later, the same tiger killed a second keeper. So Aspinall took a gun, went out himself and killed the tiger. She was always a mean animal. She came from Winnipeg. She was born in Winnipeg. She must have been badly treated there. We got her when she was 18 months old, and she had a sort of hatred of humans um, ever since. So we kept her because she was a good breeder. Some people like to walk their dogs. John Aspinall prefers to walk his elephants. His idea of a good time is playing matador with a one-ton baby elephant. Bath time here is always fun for one and all, especially for Aspinall. He knows this is dangerous, but he's prepared to risk himself and even his own child for animal love. I took my six months old baby in with the gorilla family. And, and one of the very motherly females who hadn't got a baby at that time <laughs> grabbed him and you know, mothered him and went off with him. The trouble was that Juju, the mother, went up to the top, you've seen my enclosure, she, she went right up to the top. Carrying your child? Carrying the baby. With one arm she kept him like this, and with the other arm she climbed around the top, and I walked underneath her in case she dropped him and I could catch him. But um, no, she, they returned to terra firma in very good shape. And... Would you trust a child, a six-month-old baby, to a gorilla? I must confess I wouldn't trust my own child in that way. I think that's really a bit extreme, and we mustn't forget that they are powerful animals and, and mistakes could happen. So we mustn't be too uh, romantic about this. So we, we must always be cautious. A crucial point to remember is that this huge gorilla, which has a reputation for sort of tearing people limb from limb, uh, and is always thought of as the great killer raping monster, in fact went up and in a very delicate and very gentle way just touched the, the body of the child. Although not everyone will want to drop in on Yambo, you've got to admit that in the world of man and beast, he stands out as Mr. Nice Guy. So no animal will attack unless there is a very powerful reason for doing so. It never does it just for the hell of it. It does it, either, as I say, to find food or to defend itself against attack. That was bad luck, wasn't it, with them? Cool, 
Well, we were lucky in a way that she didn't land a few, you know. Well, she didn't break his neck, actually, when she jumped, you know. Hello, I'm Liz Hayes. Thanks for watching. To keep up with the latest from 60 Minutes Australia, make sure you subscribe to our channel. You can also download the Nine Now app for full episodes and other exclusive 60 Minutes content.